good or not. So it was just looking at the, at the data that we came up with this, this value. Everything. Okay. okay. Thank. Let's find. Thank the speaker again. Next up, we have Anna Deichner from the KTH team present uh, their submission. Uh, so hi, I'm Anna Deichner, and I'm here to present our work on diffusion-based cost generation based on. Uh, using joint text and audio representations. Um, yeah, so first I'd like to give a brief overview of KTH program on gesture synthesis. So in recent years, they have a couple of first coming out focusing on different aspects of gesture synthesis, for example, style gestures and uh, more recent recent you know, section were focused on uh, proposing strong probabilistic models to recover the expressivity and versatility of uh, human gesturing, while Jessica later tried to add the semantic aspect to gesture generation, and this one used a deterministic model com in contrast to the others. And important in this model, what kind of um, uh, conditioning do they use? All of them use audio, either ML and FCC features, and Jessica later also adds um, but features to get uh, the semantic aspects. And common assumption in this previous work is that they are all single speaker in the monologue setting. And now the challenge is how to turn this into the multi speaker, speaker agnostic, and put it in a dialogue setting. So in this work, we want to integrate these four different aspects into a model. So having semantics modeling, a strong probabilistic model. So we actually take this as the noise action diffusion model making multi-speaker, speaker agnostic, and in a dialogue setting. Uh, so a proposed method uses data to like representation to achieve speaker agnostic representation for the dialogue setting via the interlocutor information. And uh, to get the strong probabilistic aspect, we use a diffusion model. And for gesture semantics, we propose a novel approach to model the uh, speech, so audio and text and motion uh, jointly with a quantitative self-supervised learning approach. And we propose a two-stage approach. approach. Uh, first one is CSMP, which is a contrastive pre-training of motion text and audio uh, for semantics, and then uh, DDPM, which is a diffusion for the motion generation. So first I will talk about the CSMP module. Uh, so here we would like to uh, jointly model the speech and motion modalities. Uh, so we base our approach on contrastive pre-training, which is a self-supervised representation learning method. Uh, which is based on a contrastive loss, which maximizes the similarity between match pairs and minimizes between mismatch pairs. And the recent example of this uh, approach is CLIP, uh, which aims at aligning the language and vision uh, representation in a shared embedding space. And this model has been used in uh, various downstream tasks, for example, text image or image to text search, or any kind of task where this strong um, semantic relational prior can be um, exploited, for example, in robotics task or uh, text image synthesis. And what and the question is how we can leverage this in gesture generation. So for this, we took the base clip, which had the modality of vision and language, and changed its modalities to speech, uh, so text and audio and motion. And we aimed at learning a semantic relation between these two modalities. And to handle this data for the speech parts, we took uh, data to VAC embeddings. Uh, which is powerful and speaker agnostic for the audio part, but it has separate models for audio and text. And for the audio parts, we had to resample the output of the original model from 50 Hz to 30 to match the motion um, frequency. And for the text, we use a similar approach as in gesticulator. So we took the output of this data to back uh, the output tokens and repeated this at 30 Hz in accordance with the uh, original transcription of the data set. And then we fed uh, added this together and fed it into an encoder, which is a transform model, and uh, projected it into a um, space which had the same dimension as the original clip model, so 512. And for the motion part, we use exponential based map based motion features, which has been standard in this line of work, also at 30 hertz. And um, yes, we also increased the context sense from the original clip model due to the difference from the original modalities, which was language as text, and this was more continuous in nature. So that was needed to increase it 
to 500. And uh, it's also interesting that uh, this uh, CSMP acts as a data compression module. So it compresses text and audio from twice 768 to 512. So it's like a three time compression of that data. And so an important part on this is that we have semantic relation modeling and that's a speaker agnostic audio representation. And the question is, how do we use it in motion synthesis? Um, so this is our second part. Uh, here we use diffusion. So diffusion is a recent class of generality models to model complex data, data distributions. So it's based on the idea that we can model a complex data distribution by iteratively transforming a simple known distribution such as a Russian to more complex ones. So here's an illustrative example. We take this, uh, we didn't use images, but this is just for illustration. Take a uh, data point, we add noise it to it in a forward process. And in the reverse process, the model learns to reverse uh, this noising step. So there's no learning in the forwards, and all learning happens in the reverse step. And there's a special class of this uh, model, which is the noising diffusion probabilistic model, the DPM. This is the one with which we used, and this one actually predicts the adenoid at each step. And um, we follow the listener to the noise very closely, so we almost use the same model. And so we prioritize the noise model as a residual neural network with stacked transformers. And we also use classifier free uh, conditioning, uh, but instead of map features, as in this is on the noise acts work, we use the CSMP motion features as conditioning. Um, so here we can use a final uh, here we can see the final system architecture. So first we have this pertaining of the CSMP module, then we produce this network, and we extract the motion features for both interact and main agent as a conditional signal to the DP DDPM. So that signal is 1024 uh, dimensional. And this is uh, and this important part is this is where we add interpreter information. Um, so we got the evaluation from the general organizers, which are similar likeness, appropriateness to agent speech, and appropriateness to interlocutor and um, interlocutor's motion and speech. And for human likeness, we uh, achieved uh, uh, the like, highest performance from entries with a mean rating of 65.6, and this was significantly better than what but one. And the score, interestingly, is very close to the human uh, for the natural condition. And for speech appropriateness, uh, we also achieved a high performance. And this was significantly more appropriate to speech than the other entries. And we can see two examples. So, like, we, I don't know, the, everything was like disconnected with our like actual thing because there was only nine of us. The same speaker. So there's seven of us, and we have like this room that has two like queen or full beds, and then like two like day beds like out in the living room. So interesting is that it can produce very expressive motion, but also there are some semantic aspects when the agent is talking about two different options, it uses the hand interchangeably, which was kind of interesting to see. And it also works for so have you can you ever record any advertisement that you feel personally very interesting? that you, you have some expression on it. And for interactive appropriateness, we achieved one of the lowest performance from entries, and that was significantly worse than all but one. And possible explanation that we did not use the information in a correct way, and we also did not put in any information on the motion from the interlocutor side. So we might like this mimicry uh, aspect, uh, which is important in a dyadic setting. And we also, um, zeroed out the crosstalk, so that could be an issue. And here's an example of... I, can't, I liked it the first time. The second time I was thinking, mm, okay, you know, I've got yeah. over the... Yeah. And, you know, yeah. And, um, so this behavior is very, very minimal, but we can see some back channeling, like head nods. So, but this could be perhaps improved. Yeah, and in summary, we aim at achieving gesture moderation, which has Pressure semantics modeling, a strong probabilistic uh, model for versatile motion generation, a speaker agnostic, and is a dialogue setting. And we propose this two stage approach of contrastive between of speech and motion and diffusion. So, thank you.